So here I am in MuseScore. I've got the vocal parts right here. And once I've gone through and checked everything in the score to make sure that the lyrics are all correct and they're not missing anything, they're not uh, doubled up anywhere, and so on, make sure they follow the guidelines as shown in the render page. Then I will export it as a MIDI file and then as an audio file and then render it and then combine them in Logic Pro. So first step, export MIDI file. So there's the MIDI file. And then let's do a WAV file. And that's going to bounce that down. And actually what I should have done first is mute the two voices because I don't want the placeholder vocals in there. So let's export that again. Wave. Okay, so that's the orchestra without the vocals. Okay, so next step is to get it into Logic Pro. And there's our MIDI file from today. And the reason I opened the, the MIDI file in Logic like this is it's a very handy way of setting all of the tempo changes and other information here. I don't usually use any of this, at least not right off. And But this is just here for reference, so if I want to double any one of these tracks later on, I have the MIDI information. So I'm just going to create a stack here for the original MIDI data and then just reset these because I don't really need anything here yet. So I'm just going to... There. Clears those out. Clears that out. And now I have a file where all my tempo changes are set. So now I will load the audio file. And that is under WAVE. This is just the orchestra. It should stay right in sync. And I'm just going to throw a really minor compression on here. Just something to bring it out. Just a little bit of reverb. This could have come from MuseScore as well, but I'm going to do it here. Okay, that's enough reverb. Now we can take the MIDI file and render the vocals. Uh, MIDI, there we go. And I'm going to choose Lucia and Sarastro. And I'm not going to use much reverb at all here because I'm going to do most of it in Logic. So I'll give this a minute. If you're wondering why it's broken up like this, it, it renders in, in roughly 18 second segments, and that's what those are. So the soprano is a shorter part. Although by looking at this, it doesn't look it. But when you render something where the parts are of unequal content length, then you'll see the, uh, the longer ones have more segments. Okay, there's that. And now I have the option of downloading this as individual dry wave files so I can mix each voice separately, which I'll do. But I also have the full mix. So back in Logic, I'll go to my downloads. 
Let me just take a preview. Okay, there's the the mix. And I am going to be changing the way these are labeled based on uh, your user feedback. And don't need that right now. <laughs> Just a very basic voice setting. And then they have the mix down here as well if I need it later on. So what I use this for is, let's say that this was a choral piece. I would render all the voices first, download the mix, Put it in here, change the voices so that each one sings a different part, render it again, download that mix, put that in here, and then repeat until you run out of voices, just rearranging it until it creates a kind of choral effect. That's actually how the um, one of the recent demos. So this was done a combination of ways. This was uh, these up here. These are all choral. In other words, the group mixed without uh, any separation. And down here are the soloists. sound. And that's about it for this demonstration.